Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and to a Carter Vanguard OCG Tournaments results video and we've got this past weekend which a couple of things happened. Some single tournaments, a team tournament, a two deck tournament. In addition to that we also got the release of Extra Booster 6 which gives us Wave 2 Kagero, Wave 2 Nova Graveler, and Wave 2 Link Joker. Link Joker, spoiler alert, didn't really do much as we expected. I think Nova's actually did a thing or two and like Kagero's like the best deck out of those three which is no real surprise and I believe it's actually the second best deck of the format now. Like, the great is putting it work. Not to mention just a little bit of other cards that they're doing. But in any case, uh, the thing to take away from this video is that if you have not picked up perfect cards for Nova, Kagero, and Link Joker, you need to get on that. Because Nova got for PGs, if I recall, are almost entirely bought out everywhere. And, like, we're getting pretty close to that. And Wyvern and Garbaris. I think are still reasonable. I think they're five dollars U.S. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Regardless, Kagero Perfect Guards are still pretty cheap, and if you plan on picking up Wave Two or Wave Three Kagero, get them because the moment that we find out what the Dote does, those things are going to be gone. So that being said, let's once again take a look at how much Bermuda Triangle is dominating everyone. So first up, we have the Oil Brigade BGCS Standard Format, 30 teams. First place, Shadow Paladin, Bermuda Triangle, Highlander, and OTT. Second place, Melody, Bermuda Triangle, Nova Grouther, and Shadow Paladin. Third place, BT Melody, Murakumo, Kagero. Fourth place, BT Melody, Angel Feather, and Kagero. So, the rare appearance of the Highlander build, as far as Bermuda Triangle goes. Up until this point, the Melody build has been the clearly favorite of the two, but I guess people are trying to get the Highlander strategy to work. Kagero with a couple spots and the rare Nova Grappler appearance. And as far as the clan numbers go, well, this is pretty much you can expect ARG Nats to be because I do believe, yeah, Extra Booster 6 is legal for that. Extra Booster 7 is not. I believe that's where the difference is. So, prepare to see a lot of BT, a lot of Kagero, and then probably a decent amount of OTT. Um, I believe I was incorrect when I said that OTT plays well into BT. I actually. No, that was wrong. I think Bermuda Triangle actually does beat Oracle Think Tank. Uh, I think Kagro plays okay-ish into them. Uh, BT doesn't like getting its field blown up. That is very much a thing. BT can still swing for enormous numbers. So, I guess it comes down to who's the better aggressor. Like, I obviously can't really talk about this very much because I don't play Kagro right now and I have no experience seeing Kagro and BT go at it. I'm hoping that we'll eventually get some video footage of people playtesting that to get a better idea. And, yeah, so we have that. Shadows were played afterwards, Angels were all... Man, Angel Feathers! You used to be so very good, and now we got a new waifu deck that's ruling the game. Now, what else of note here? There were only... Uh, how many Nova Grapplers were there? Only three people playing Nova Grappler. Okay. So, first by team. Let's see, that is a terrible glare, but that's Shadow Paladin. This guy's playing... Uh, okay, that's Gus Blaster and Phantom Blaster. This is BT. This is Oracle Think Tank. Second place, you've got BT. Ah, Nova Grappler. Okay, so I actually do have a standard Nova Grappler core, so I'm very curious to see what they were going to be playing from the old cards into here. And by old cards, I mean not very much of them, because you know, Wave 1 Nova Grapplers sucked. Like, there is no getting around how bad Nova Grappler's first wave was. Like, it wasn't even enough to compete very well in a format of only four decks. Let alone we started getting more and more things. And like if you're if you're gonna tell me like people actually did believe that Nova's were like one of the best decks coming out of that set. And all I have to say was people were delusional back then because of how bad Nova's were. Like they were a bottom five. At least now we're starting to see them top more than once every few months. And I do like this list. It plays in Scythe Riser as the backup gift grade three. I think that card is just better than Ashura Kaiser. Granted, Ashura Kaiser can stand anything, whereas Insights can only stand Axel Regards. But you second ride Insights Riser, you get two Axel Circles, and then for like, I think it's a Counter Blast, you stand him back up. So it's like a cheaper Perfect Riser. And he's also playing Max Riser, and mostly new cards. Like, as far as old cards that I see in here, I see a Boomerang Thrower, I believe that is his name, one promo version of King of Sword. And Riser Custom in the PG. And yeah, there's a 4 Azure Dragon, 4 Incise Riser, uh, 3 Incise Riser, 4 Max Riser. But again, he's like your big BB 
Axel attacker. Like, that thing's 32 on Axel, if I'm correct. And then your third place team of Shadow Paladin. This guy with the blink. I mean, third player of the second place team playing Shadow Paladin. My bad. Moving on to third. BT. No, over. Uh, ah, so this guy's not playing Shiryuki. He's playing Zanbaku, Zangeki, and Musashi, which probably is better for dealing with Protect. Okay, then again, with the numbers that Bruno Triangle puts up, does Shiryuki really do that much to them um, when you're trying to be defensive? But, yeah, so this is just a, a dueling dragon build. And we have, oh, what's this again? Kagura. Okay, so here's our first Kagura list. What is he doing? He's playing the Great Waterfall. I don't think I see any other Great Three, so he's just playing the Great and Waterfall. Four Neo Flame, three Aramo, two Dragon Buster, four Berserk, uh, not four Berserk Dragon, four Burning Horn Dragon, four of uh, Sable Newt, the Better Demolition Dragon, three Gaius. Um, not sure how I feel about this list. And then for the fourth place, we've got BT, Angel Feather, and another Kagura list. So this guy's playing OG Overlord, the Great. Only one Waterfall. I don't know about that one either. One armor, uh, full armor Dragon Buster that looks like the starter. And then 444 of Berserk, Neo Flame, and uh, Burnout. This one's playing Bar as well, so he's playing Aramo. Sable, uh, Sable, Dragon Newt, and Bar. Oops. I think I jumped ahead to the next one. Alright, so, then we've got the Yellow Submarine Kyoto VGCS VMC Qualifier, 48 people standard format, first and second place for PT, and the rest are not known. So, there's that, and there's that. BT Mirror Matches, prepare to see a lot of that as well. Then there's the Yellow Submarine VGCS VMC Qualifier standard, 62 people, Kagro won it, but the list is not known at the time of this video going up. And second place was BT. And that was my chair. I really need to replace this thing, but that is not a good job. Well, I mean, it's BT at this point. I think you guys know what's going on. Then we have the Super Kabos Shin Ninomiya VGCS standard format. First, second, and third for all Bermuda Triangle. Fourth place is OTT. Fifth. 6th and 7th place for BT, and then 8th place was Kakuro. <laughs> oh god, that's our format. So we've got BT, 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 an Oracle Think Tank. I think BT, Kakuro, and Oracle Think Tank are going to be your power 3 decks of the format. Then we got the Aoka VGCS standard format. 48 people, 1st place was BT, 2nd and 3rd were Kakuro. 4th to 8th place for BT, BT, Shadow Paladin, Link Joker, and Nova Grappler. I'm going to assume the Link Joker build was Brant, as the one time that I was able to see which builds were seeing more play, Brant was seeing more play over Deleter, which makes sense. I think, I feel like that deck has some potential. If nothing else, being able to just completely, like, shit on people who are just inherently trigger sacky is hilarious, and that's kind of what I want to, uh, the reason why I want to build a deck. Because I know a couple people that Brant will just absolutely dominate against. So, let's see. Here's your first place BT list. Here's your second place Kagura list. So this guy's playing... Okay, this is a bit cut off, so I don't actually know the full numbers of this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing three great... or three to four copies of the great, three Waterfall, three Overlord, multiple Buster, Neo Flame, and Nahalem, and Berserk Dragon, uh, no, yeah, Berserk Dragon, Aramo, Sable Newt, and Gaius. I can only assume Aramo is maxed out, because why wouldn't you max it out? Um, so, why are people still playing OG Overlord over, say, Dual Axe Dragon or Fire Rage Dragon? One, Dual Axe Dragon is a bit difficult to get in Japan. It's a promo card, and I believe it's like 60 bucks for the foil version of it. But, like, it's not very easy to pick up. And secondly, by running OG Overlord in addition to the Great, your full armor Dragon Buster has a better chance of hitting something when you ride or call it because it's look a top 7 for an Overlord. Therefore, you get to secure your ride, and OG Overlord can be an emergency beat stick at 23 on rearguard if need be. So I actually kind of like the concept behind this build, and if I were to play Kagro, I would probably give it a shot. And you can see this Kagro decklist. So this guy 
is not playing Waterfall at all. He's just playing the Great Overlord and Fire Rage Dragon. He's got a Neo Flame, Berserk, Burnout. I think Burnout is low key underrated. Then you've got Full Armor Dragon Buster. Two seems to be the optimal number. He is Soul Blast two, if I'm correct. So yeah, that makes sense. And you do kind of need Soul for some of your stuff. Airmo, Sable Newt, yeah. Yeah, like your grade ones at this point are pretty much Airmo, Sable Newt, and then some combination of either Gaia and Bar. And then four heal, seven crit, and five draw. Uh, yeah, TLDR, the great is seeing play. And then you've got the eighth place. So the eighth place Nova Grappler person made a blog post and I look at this, I think, why are you playing Perfect Riser? Like, I just feel like that card's just not very good, but he has a report. I haven't read it yet because I don't really want to deal with a tournament report on Google Translate. But yeah, he just decided to document it, so there you go. Truth be told, I like the other Nova Grappler list better, but it's up there. And then we got the uh, Saga uh, Asagi, Asagi VGCS Premium Format. Oh my god, Premium! So. What do we have? We have BT and Twa. Second place, Great Nature, Leopold, Big Belly. Third place, the leader, Messiah Lake Joker. Fourth place, Royal Paladin, Alt Mile Brave, mind you. Not Blasters, but Brave. And then fifth to eighth place were Dimensional Robos, Coral, Ichi Tom, and Asha. Neo Nectar with an appearance in top eight. Obviously, I'm hyped on that. Like, holy shit. Premium looks so dope right now. Like, and like I saw talk about in like the blog post a bit more, but basically, here we are. Standard format is basically BT running the show with Kagro and occasionally OTT, and then you've got premium brothers. Just like, yeah, you've got the problem child of Gold Paladin, and although clearly it didn't do as much here, and it was played. Like, but I guess maybe these other decks are better. But like, you've got decks like Gold Paladin and Anstwa. Yes, they are issues. However, you look past those two decks, and you have a pretty fun and open format. Like, I, some of these decks look sick. Like, let's take a look at this. So, Angstwa, that makes sense. And before uh, you ask, I've talked with some people. Hitting this stand trigger was necessary. If Crook was still allowed at four, this deck would have been tier zero. And this is coming from actual BT players. Then we've got your Leopold Big Belly deck list here. So, great nature getting in there. This is a pretty solid deck. Okay, the leader Messiah. So, I was always curious what they were going to be doing with Link Joker in this format. And here you go. So, you play Gradol, you play the other on plays delete, and you've got just four of the Messiah that works on Rhaegar plus one Alter Ego Neo Messiah. And as far as your G zone goes, it's more or less just you're trying to set up for the, uh, what's his face? Amnesty Messiah? No, Amnesty Messiah? Is that his name? The uh, one that's on attack, unlock, get big with a crit, and you restand that with given. And then you've also got the Integral Messiah, which is on attack, unlock everything, and then restand that with given. Like, you're basically trying to set up for a dunk with given. And there's a really well done Messiah Deleter deck profile on YouTube that you can Google around. It's on Vangle 40's channel. And the guy talks about the deck and the, the idea of it. And I like the idea that's behind it, so there's that. Then here's your Alt Mile Royal Paladin. So once again, uh, Shion Kun getting in there. Then you've got this DP deck list. You've got Coral. Don't forget, this is also deck two. Ichi Tom. And finally, Neo Nectar. So this I'm going to talk about a little bit because I really like what he's got going on here. So he's using a combination of the old Blusha deck in addition to some of the more recent cards. You've got Blusha, Trailing Rose, more token generators, and like, the idea is you just use tokens to fill your board early, early, rush your opponent down, and then you start using your strides to beat face. And I just think, this is what the deck can do before the addition of the Katarina stride, which is low-key insane. Like, it's on place, flip, call tokens equal to your face-up cards in G-Zone, then on attack, call cards out of your deck for every token you have in play. So like it an, enables multi-attack and it'll be in a fantastic first stride. Like you ride Maiden and Trailing Rose, put your Force Marker down, get two tokens, stride, get your token, swing, call three. Also your tokens are like at plus 10,000 power. Mm. I like this and I really, really, really want to play this. And then lastly, we've got the Malaysia Gift BGCS number three standard two deck format of 63 people. 
Different Fight has the finals of this on his channel. I haven't watched it yet, but I plan to. But obviously, chances are, if you're sub to me, you're probably sub to him, so you'll probably watch it at some point. But anyway, so finals was OTT. Oh, yeah, let's see. It was won by OTT and BT Melody. Second place was BT Highlander in Ekago. So uh, the other rare appearance of the Highlander deck. And then third, BT Melody and OTT. Fourth, Angel Feather and BT Melody. So, as you might have noticed, BT, once again, taking up as much of the top cut as possible. Like, it, even though Kagro is doing as well as it is, BT is just doing that much better. Like, they overtuned this deck like crazy since it's got its only one year of support. Yes, I know that's not fair to the other clans that only ever get one year of support too, looking particularly at the Destructive Roar clans, because they're only ever going to get one year of support, and how come Mega Colony isn't doing that well after one set? But... They do know, also know that f the fish sells compared to bugs. In any case, actual tournament itself. So, as far as the numbers go, BT and Kagura were the most played decks. Nine Melody BT versus four Highlander. Shadow Paladin was the third most played deck. OTT and the Murakumo were tied after that. Link Joker had eight people, five Branch and three Deleters. Eight Novas, so Novas seeing a little bit more play. Their wave three might just be what finally breaks them in. Azure Illuminal Dragon, I forget, is that his name? Illuminal Dragon, there we go. That card's really dope, and I think he has like the best chance of making this deck work. Seven Royal Paladin, interestingly enough, they're playing, more people play Blasters over Alfred, which is, I think, a little bit odd, because I think Alfred is still the better deck, it's more consistent. Blasters is a bit more of a gimmick, and I think it's a bit too frail as well. It also doesn't help that it gets completely fucked over by rulings, like Arc Saver Dragon, Canola Call from Face Up Damage, that is a big oof. Dragon Mage Kimnara also just fricks over this deck because Kimnara, since you can't target three of your opponent's rear guards and kill the rest, you just nuke everything. You fulfill the skill as much as possible. Uh, let's see, seven Neo Nectar, five Great Nature, six Gold Paladin, five Azel, one Garmore, four Angel Feather and Pale Moon, three Naros, three Grand Blue, two Nubatama, two Genesis, and then one Aqua Force and one DI. I will give DI and Aqua Force credit for trying to make the dream come true, but at this point, like as far as Aqua Force goes, just just sit out the format and just wait until your wave two comes in and pray to god to get you there anyway so first place you got your bt and your ott second place kagero so he's playing a 3-3-3 split of the overlords i like that and this one's actually playing dragon mage kimnara and calamity tower wyvern which is like the first time i've seen them in these lists bt highlander let's see i believe yeah he is playing a couple two ofs in here just simply because if you ride one, you can at least have the other one still in your deck. It would suck if you ever see two of these two O's in your deck, but I think that's just the chance you're taking when you're playing Highlander and trying to be a little bit consistent. Then you got your third place BT, third place OTT, fourth place BT, and fourth place Angel Feather. So that's pretty much it. So once again, with the new release, uh, with the release and a new set, mind you, Kagro is more competitive, but at the end of the day, BT still reigns supreme, and it'll probably, granted, Kagro might be able to find a way to adapt and deal with the matchup. It's very close to being able to stand up with them. Wave 3 Kagro, and particularly Dragon Overlord at the end, will probably be that final oomph needed for Kagro to stand on par with BT. So, with that being said, though, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Boostarter9, jacking out.